Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh dear viewers home I welcome you to the program Health Check. It is a program where we talk about health matters concerning our life. I am Naima Njia Simfuka, your host. As I have already introduced the program, it is Health Check. In today's program, we are going to be looking at cancer. The topic of discussion is oral cancer. Uh, before I introduce the guest who is going to take us through today's discussion, we all know it very well that cancer as a disease has existed for quite a number of decades. It has been in existence, but then in this current generation we are in, cancer has been proven to be a silent killer disease, which has swept away thousands of people around the world. With me in the studios today, we are delighted to have a guest, uh, Dr. Aisha Abdul. She is with us here in the studios, and she's going to take us through our topic of discussion. As I earlier told you, that it is going to be oral cancer. Despite the fact that we have quite a number of types, but for today, we are going to be dealing or we are going to specify ourselves on a single category, which is oral cancer. Uh, Dr. Aisha, you're most welcome to the program and kindly say salam to our dear viewers. Thank you for having me on the show. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Our dear viewers home, it is a kind request that you get a piece of paper and a pen. You jot down what you're going to discuss today because it is really very <coughs> important. As I have already told you that cancer is a silent killer disease. And by writing this, you can save a friend, all you yourself, or a relative by maybe talking or sharing with them. There could be signs and symptoms of oral cancer as we are going to look at it in our today's discussion. Uh, doctor, yes, we're going to talk about oral cancer. True. I would like you to first define for us, what is oral cancer? Oral cancer basically is a term that is used to refer to a group of cancers mm. affecting structures inside the mouth. Mm. Oral basically is a term to refer to the mouth. Yes, so oral cancer, those are cancers occurring in the mouth, mm. affecting structures, especially the tongue, especially the flow of the mouth, Mm. It can, but it can also affect the gums, okay. the salivary glands, mm. the inner aspects of the cheeks, the lips, mm. and the roof of the mouth. Okay. So any cancer affecting any of those structures is what is termed as oral cancer. Uh, thank you so very much, Doctor, mm. for defining what oral cancer is. Mm. We have uh, learned the areas or where oral cancer grows or appears, she has stated it right that it is the mouth. True. So can you try to tell us about the prevalence of oral cancer? Um, oral cancer is not uncommon. Okay. It's a very common type of cancer. It's mm. classified under head and neck cancers. Okay. And of all head and neck cancers, mm. it's the commonest. And globally, it affects four in 3,000 individuals. If you have a group of 3,000 individuals, yeah. four of them will be having oral cancer. Okay. Oral cancer is the sixth most common type of cancer in the whole world, okay. affecting more men than women. Why? Why? Because men indulge themselves in activities that put them at risk of developing oral cancer okay. compared to women as we shall see later. All right. Yes. I uh, thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Aisha, mm -hmm. for elaborating to us the prevalence. Uh, my dear viewer who is watching us home, for your comments, observations, or questions, you can reach us at our email address, 
mta.africa.tv. I said mta.africa.tv. You can send your observations, comments. Let us proceed, doctor. Having looked at the introduction, that is the definition of oral cancer, you've talked about the prevalence. Mm -hmm. And what I've learned is that the men are affected much or they prove to be victims of oral cancer than women. But True. you told us that you're going to look at that mm -hmm. in the later stage of our discussion. Mm -hmm. Can we look at the types of oral cancer, if at all they are there? Yes, we have several types of oral cancer. Yeah. And the type you'll have depends on the, s on the cells that have been affected by the cancer. For example, if the cancer started in the cells that line the inside of your mouth, those cells that are, are called squamous cells, mm. then the type of cancer you would have would be a squamous cell cancer, stroke carcinoma, because the cells are called squamous cells. And that is the most prevalent of all types of oral cancer. Okay. Yes, 90 percent of individuals diagnosed with oral cancer have that type squamous cell carcinoma. Mm. Yeah, the other types of cancer can be an adenocarcinoma, that is a type of cancer where which affects the cells in your salivary glands. Okay. Now, if you have cancer affecting the cells in your muscles, in your bones, cartilage, then that would be a sarcoma. So that depends on the cells okay. that have been affected. Hmm. By the by the cancer, but you can also classify <coughs> it basing on the structure and that the has structure. been affected. Yes, okay. yes, stru the structure in the mouth that has been affected. For example, if it affected the lips, then that would be a lip cancer. Hmm. If it affected the jaws, that would be a jaw cancer, cancer. tongue cancer, okay. depending on the structure that has been affected. Okay. Yes, please. Um, having taken us through the types, mm -hmm. I'm sure my dear viewer home we are moving at the same track we've defined we know the prevalence and we have learned the types of oral cancer uh, let us keep moving forward doctor mm. what are the signs and symptoms of oral cancer um, unfortunately the signs and symptoms of cancer may present like the signs and symptoms of other common conditions so it's very easy to mistake them for other common conditions okay. but the difference with the signs presented by cancer is that these signs and symptoms will not go away okay. after several days mm. yeah, however much you medicate yourself they will not go away that is if it's a cancer okay. whereas for the other common conditions those once you get the medication they they'll clear, clear. Okay. they'll clear mm. so these signs and symptoms include may include sores okay yeah these sores may present especially on the sides of your tongue mm. at the floor of the mouth okay. or at the lips especially at the corners of the mouth mm. yeah that those are the areas mostly affected by oral cancer okay. but other structures can also be affected Okay. We have these sores presenting on your gums, hmm. at the roof of your mouth, anywhere in the mouth. Okay. But special about them is they will not heal hmm. after several weeks or months. Okay. They will stay forever hmm. and they'll have irregularly shaped edges. Hmm. That is specific for cancers. Okay. They'll be irregularly shaped and they'll be firm hmm. ulcers. Okay. Yeah. So the other... When you talk of electrically shaped, are they when we we come to the point of are they soft or hard because they are growing or they appear in the softer part of the body that is the mouth? Yes, they can appear either in bone or on on soft tissues. Okay. But special about them is that they'll be very hard. Mm. Yeah. For example, if it appeared on the tongue, you okay. would expect it to be soft. Mm. But if it's a cancer, it will be very hard okay. with irregularly shaped edges. Mm. Then you can also have a growth anywhere in your mouth. That growth will also be irregularly shaped with varying degrees of pain. Mm. It may either pain or not, it may bleed. Mm. Then you can have white or red patches anywhere in your mouth. You may have loosening of teeth that mm. is in unexpected. Your mouth is very clean. But the out the of the blue, they start sagging. They start sagging. Yes. 
you ca if you wear dentures, mm. they also you may also have difficulty wearing them because you're developing lumps somewhere, so the dentures cannot fit well. Okay. Yes, if you may also experience difficult chewing mm. food because you're having wounds, okay. you're having lumps. So that may also point to a cancer. Okay. You may have chronic bad breath. That is bad breath that doesn't go away. Mm. The mouth is clean, no decay, no nothing. Okay. But the mouth has a terrible smell that doesn't go away. Even if you brush and have However much you brush, however much you use mouthwashes, the okay. smell doesn't go away. That may point mm. to oral cancer. Okay. You may also have change in your voice. That is if the cancer is affecting at the back of your mouth, okay. yeah, or a pharyngeal carcinoma, then you would have difficult speaking. Mm. Those are some of the presentations of cancer, okay. oral cancer. Okay. Mm. Thank you so very much, Dr. Aisha. Uh, my wonderful viewer who is at home, hopefully we are moving at the same pace. I did tell you in the first run that get what to write this information is very important uh, because I really told you that the rate at which cancer is eating up humans is at a faster rate and remember it is a silent killer disease by the time we get to know about it when it is almost in its last stages when sometimes it is not even curable uh, let us proceed having taken us through the signs and symptoms mm. what are the risk factors or what causes oral cancer um, the exact cause of oral cancer is not known, okay. but certain activities can increase your risk of developing oral cancer. Mm. And top on the list is tobacco use. Okay. Use of tobacco, either by smoking the tobacco, chewing the tobacco, or use of tobacco in any form mm. increases your risks of developing oral cancer by six times. Yeah, so if you're smoking, it's good that you stop if you haven't started smoking, please do not start mm. because you want to avoid the oral cancer. Okay. The other risk factor is excessive alcohol consumption. Mm. And if you, you're combining these two, mm. that is tobacco use. You're and at a greater risk. Yeah, then you're drinking, okay. then your risk goes really, really high. Okay. Yeah. And the other factor, okay, those are the two major, the major, major ones. factors. Mm. Can you but you also to have the others. The others may other. include um, a virus known as human papilloma virus. Mm. That virus, in addition to causing cervical cancer and genital warts, also causes oral cancer. Okay. Other risk factors may include excessive exposure to the sun, especially at a younger age. Mm. Yeah, the sun contains ultraviolet rays that, rays that may bring about mutations in your cells okay. later on developing into cancer mm. so if it's good to avoid the sun if you if you ha if you can mm. avoid staying under the sun okay. now if you must stay under the sun then you, you use protective gears such as broad beamed broad brimmed hats that mm. will shade your face from from the sun because the sun the sun is associated with especially deep cancers mm. so if you wear a hat that sheds your, your that lips protects from you from those rays yes then you'll be somehow safe okay yeah the other risk factors may include family history mm. if you if you've had a relative in your family who has suffered oral cancer mm. then you're also likely to get it so it's better you you do away with the, the practices that may predispose you okay. to oral cancers because your risks are very high. Uh, uh, yeah. Doctor, is it in line with uh, genetic syndrome? True that. Mm. Mm. Okay. True. Yeah, so you're supposed to, to do away with those activities that put you more at risk of oral cancer. Okay. Mm. As I was trying to read here and there, mm. I came across a factor which was like, previous mm. are, are someone who was or who had ever been affected with cancer but then at a given stage it can recur is it true it's also one of the risk factors if you've suffered oral cancer mm. before chances of you developing it again are high compared to someone who hasn't suffered from it before okay. so that is also a risk factor the other risk factor is being a male male are so much 
predisposed to, to cancer compared mm. to women because of their indulgence in, in those activities. They drink more than women, okay. they smoke more than women, okay. they, they stay under the sun more than women. Mm. So being male is also a risk factor. The other risk factor is age, being older than 65 years of age. Okay. Yeah. Those individuals older than that age are more at risk of developing this type of cancer, although younger individuals mm. can also be affected, especially if they are smoking, if they are chewing tobacco, mm. if they drink. Okay. They, also, they can also be affected by the same. Uh, thank you so very much, Dr. Aisha Abdul, for enlightening us about the signs and symptoms of oral cancer. Having told us about the signs and symptoms, if someone has oral cancer or if someone is a victim, yeah. how can oral cancer be diagnosed? Um, diagnosis basically begins with examination, that is by your doctor. Okay. Your doctor will examine the mouth mm. and then if he finds any dangerous spots, okay. then he'll start from there. Mm. He'll start the investigations from there. Mm. But you can also do you can also diagnose it somehow at home. It's recommended that you do regular check checks ah. in of your mouth, that is once at least once a month. With your dentistry? No, you can do it at home. Mm. Yeah, all the dentists can do it. Mm. So at home, you just get your mirror and then check. Okay. Yeah, the entire mouth of mm. yours. Yeah, if you find out that you have Any something you don't understand, you yes, mm. yeah, then you can run to your dentist. But the dentist, you're also supposed to visit a dentist okay. at least twice a year. Mm. Yeah, because these cancers, if detected early, then they can be cured. Mm. If you go to the dentist when the cancer has already advanced, okay. then chances of successful treatment are reduced. So in the diagnosis, the confirmatory test that we use in diagnosing oral cancer, just like the other forms of cancer, mm. is a biopsy. Okay. Biopsy is where we take out portion of your tissue mm. that is affected by the cancer. Mm. Yeah, we take it out and then to the laboratory where the pathologist will examine it and then find out if there are cancer cells. Okay. Yeah, the bi biopsies are of different types mm. yeah, depending on the tumor you're having, the cancer you're having. Mm. If it's, for example, a small cancer, a small swelling, mm. it can all be picked out and taken to the lab for examination. Okay. That is an excisional biopsy. Mm. The whole of it is taken to okay. the lab. If it's a big mass, then just a portion of it is it's taken, taken out. Okay. Yeah, that, that is incisional biopsy. Mm. If it's filled with fluid, then we can do an aspiration biopsy. Okay. Yeah, if it's, for example, a sore, mm. a cancer presenting as a sore, we can just brush it, use a brush and then scrape, and then take that tissue to the lab. So it depends on the type of cancer. Okay. You're having biopsies, the confirmatory test for mm. cancer. But we can also do other investigations, okay. such as x-rays, for example, an OPG, mm. that is an x-ray of your jaws. Okay. It will help us find out if the cancer has spread to your jaws. Mm. Yeah. We can also do MRI scans to find out the extent of the cancer. Because it brings out accurate images. Yes, the, 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 the images are clear. Mm. Yeah, yeah it's, it shows the extent of spread of cancer into the soft tissues. Okay. CT scans can also be done to show the extent of the cancer in the bones. But also, because oral cancers can spread to the lungs, and the chest. To, to the chest, yeah, we can also do chest x-rays to find out if the metastasis right, is there. Which cancer has spread. Yes. Uh, thank you so very much, Doctor, for taking us through the um, diagnosis, diagnosis mm -hmm. kinds. She has talked a lot. There are quite a number of ways how oral cancer can be diagnosed. And so let us cross over to looking at the treatment. Can oral cancer be treated? Um, oral ca I would say yes and no, because if it's diagnosed early mm. and then the treatment is started on time, okay. then it can be treated and it will heal completely. But if you go to the clinic, to the hospital, when it's in the late stages, then it cannot be treated. And that and implies it mm. is supposed to be all 
it is curable in the first and the second stage. stages. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Stages After that, four, you then might not heal. chances of successful treatment are minimal. Okay. Yes. Mm. So treatment options, it depends on how your doctors assist you. It depends on on the type of cancer you're having the location of the cancer and the stage of the cancer. So mm. you saw that the doctor assesses you and then determine, if decides on the best treatment option okay. to give you. But the options we have are surgery, mm. especially for small tumors. Okay. That may be followed by radiation therapy where we use beams of radiation. Okay. These we di are directed to, to the tumor mm. to make sure no, t no cancer cells have remained. But you can also use drugs. Mm. Drugs also are used to, to that is chemotherapy. Mm. They are used to destroy cancer cells. Okay. Or they can also be used after surgery mm. to still destroy the cancer cells that may have remained. Um, the other tr th those can be used separately or okay. together in okay. combination, eh, depending mm. on the severity of the cancer. Okay. Yeah, the other treatment option can be, it's called immunology, where, <coughs> where, we use, where your immune system is boosted mm. to be able to fight the cancer. Because remember, when the cancer sets in, it blinds your immune system. Okay. And the immune system will not be able to fight the cancer. Mm. So in, in this type of treatment, your immune we give you drugs okay. to boost your immune system mm. to be able to fight the, the cancer. Um, the other option is targeted therapy where still drugs are given to you mm. to precisely identify cancer cells, cancer cells alone and, mm. and so destroy them. Yeah, that is targeted therapy. Then in late stages of cancer where the other options, options have, yes, have less chances Impact. of yes, mm. then we can do palliative care where we, we just aim at improving the quality of your life without necessarily curing the cancer. Right. Those are the basically the treatment options we uh, have. Doctor, of all the types mm. of treatment, you've talked about the mm. surgery, mm. the immunotherapy, you've talked about a lot. But of all those you've aired out, which one is more appropriate to be used by? They are all appropriate depending on your condition. Mm. They are all appropriate, but most self would be targeted therapy because for it, it, it precisely identifies the cancer cells and destroys them okay. without destroying the normal cells. Mm. But the rest just kill everything, including the normal cells. Yeah. Can someone prevent him or her soul from becoming a victim of oral cancer? Um, Basically, there is no proven way of preventing oral cancer, but one can reduce their risks of developing oral cancer if they, one, <coughs> stop using tobacco mm. in any form. Because you told us it is the greatest it's risk. It's the main risk factor. Mm. So if you stopped using tobacco in any form, either smoking it or chewing it, mm. then your chances of developing oral cancer will what? really go down. Okay. Now, if you stopped consuming alcohol, mm. then your chances will still go down. If you ate healthy, especially diets containing fresh fruits and vegetables, mm. you, your, your body will be strong, your immune, immune system, system will be able boosted. to yes, to fight off so many conditions, including the cancers. Okay. Yeah, if you avoided excessive exposure to the sun, mm. then you would also be safe. Mm. Yeah, if, <coughs> if, you're, if you're already having a family history, then it's hard. It's really to hard. Control. Yes, unless it's really hard. Mm. Mm. Unless God intervenes. Yes, otherwise okay. it's, it's hard. Your chances are very high. Then there is also for, for the human papilloma virus, there's a vaccine for that. Yes, so it's, it's especially effective in individuals that are 11 and 12 years of age. Mm. Yeah, it, they, are, they are vaccinated against that virus, but also older individuals can be vaccinated, though mm. it's not as effective as it would be okay. in the young ages. So then also, the other thing is taking good care of your mouth. Mm. Yeah, if the mouth is dirty, mm. then you're also susceptible. Okay. So take good care of your mouth and then you'll be safe. 
if you have ill-fitting dentures that mm. keep on irritating irritating your gums, creating wounds, all the time having wounds in the mouth, mm. then you go to, to the dentist who will, who will do the needful so that the irritation is not there. Prolonged irritation also predisposes you to, to cancer. Okay. Then also making regular visits to a doctor is important to cross check yes to cross check and find out if you're having those dangerous spots mm. that may turn into cancer because in the african setting i don't know even in the white setting that's how they behave mm. but for us here sometimes if you get our uh, difficulty maybe in 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 eating in swallowing sometimes even if it is persistent we can as well just go on to self-medicating ourselves that is so dangerous. and sometimes if we get a little of a bit of relief we are like you just sit i'm home. very normal mm. yet maybe in one way or the other the disease is continuing Progressing. to grow mm. in you mm. uh, so your last words of advice to the entire world out there about oral cancer oral cancer what they can do mm. to avoid oral cancer is making regular visits to their doctors. Because even if you're doing the self-checks at home, it may be hard for you to identify some of the dangerous spots. Okay. You may see something and then ignore mm. it. It's very important. Mm. But if you make regular visits mm. to your doctor, he won't miss out that. So the cancer will be detected at an early age. And so you'll be able to, to be treated and you'll heal completely. But if you go in the later stages of the disease, then it's hard. But I think even those that are victims need care to be taken care of. Uh, because as humans, sometimes if someone has a given disease or has a type of disease mm -hmm. that we take known to be very commonly known, mm -hmm. sometimes we try to distance ourselves. Sometimes we try to bring in theories that are not existing. Mm. So I think such kind of people need to be uh, they, they need to be talked to mm -hmm. in a nice way. Mm -hmm. they, they, they need to be comforted in one way or the other. True. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you so very much, uh, Dr. Aisha Abdul, for your time. Uh, our dear viewers home, for your questions, comments, or observations, please reach us at our email address, which is africa at mta.tv. That is africa at mta.tv. You've been wonderful and great viewers. Hopefully the program has been a nice one, and I hope you've learned something, because I, for one, has learned a lot out of today's topic of discussion. Thank you so very much. Catch up next time. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.